Okay, now members, we are going to see how do we get the inverse of a function. We have seen a function can get elements of the domain to the elements of the range. Now, we are going to see which function gets the elements of the range back to the elements of the domain. That's what we call an inverse. You are inversing, you are reversing the process. From taking them to the range, then you are bringing them back. What brings them back to the domain is what we call an inverse of the function that took them to the range. Okay, let us define it. An inverse of a function f of x is a relation that maps elements of a range back to corresponding elements of the domain. It's bringing them back. It's denoted by f inverse of x, this is right hand inverse of a function. To get f inverse of x of this, we get f of y equal to x and we make y the subject which then becomes our inverse. Y is any variable of your choice. So this y is, you can be, it can be m, it can be n. What you do in that function of x, you substitute y, is y, you substitute x and you equate now after substituting in y, you equate that function to x. Let us see this one now. So from here, given that this is equal to this, find the inverse of this and then find this after. So you start our f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. What I do, I now bring in the value of y. But if I put here y, where I start where there is x, I'm putting y. So this one becomes 2y plus 3. Now after doing this one, I equate x to f of y. Now x will be equal to f of y. Now what is my f of y? My f of y is 2y plus 3. Now we make y the subject. So we make this y the subject. How do I make the subject? I first take this inside. This is equal to the cos of the equal sign is going to be becoming a negative. So x minus 3 equal to 2y. After taking this side, it becomes now a negative. So then I divide it through by 2 over 2 equal to 2y over 2. Remove this coefficient. I start from there, my y will be x minus 3 over 2. Now this one, now y becomes the inverse. So now our inverse of x becomes x minus 3 over 2. So this is the inverse of this function. Now they want us to get f inverse of 5. To get now f inverse of a 5, this shows that where there is x, they are putting 5. So this will be now 5 minus 3 over 2, which will be now 2 over 2. And such so our f inverse of 5 is a 1. See past that. This is the Roman number 2. This is the Roman number 1. When we come to this, now this one, they are asking us first of all to get b of 3. So my function from there, b of x is x plus 3 over x minus 2. So now b of 3, it means that where there is x, I put a 3. 3 plus 3 over 3 minus 2, which will be 6 over 1. And so this is going to give me a 6. So b of 3 is a 6. This is Roman number 1. When I come from Roman number 2, now I want to get the inverse of B. Now what I do, I get now B of Y first. Okay, B of X, first of all, our B of X is X plus 3 over X minus 2. Then my B of Y will be, now where there is X, I put Y. Y plus 3 over Y minus 2. Now after this, I equate b of y to x. So my b of y will be equal to 2x. The variable which was there originally. Now after doing that, now where there is this, I put it there. So this is y, b of y is y plus 3 over x and then over y minus 2 equal to x. Now from here, we cross multiply. I cross multiply like this. My task is to make y the sum. So we have x in 2, y minus 2. Then this time with this, we have y plus 3. What we do with open brackets, I have x, y 
minus 2x equal to y plus 3. I want to make y, so I bring y inside, I take x to the other side. I'll be adding xy, now when this process is equal sign, it becomes a minus, this side remains with the 3. When I take this beside, it becomes 2x. So now, I'm trying out y, when I remove y here, I mean with x. So when I remove y here, I mean with the 1, equal to 3 plus 2x. Now from there, allow me to write here, divide through by this, so your y, x minus 1, equal to 2, 3 plus 2x, divided by x minus 1, divided by x minus 1. So now my y, this is like this, we will cancel with that. My y will be 3, 2x over x minus 1. Now my y becomes my inverse. So now, the inverse of x is 3 plus 2x over x minus 1. As simple as that. So always, the variable we are having originally, we make it the subject, and then we replace it with the variable y. Then we make we, the variable we had, we equate it to the, after the first we do any variable, then we get that, we make that variable the subject. So now this is my Roman numeral 2. Then Roman numeral and hence the inverse of 2. The inverse of 2 means that where there is x I put 2. So I have 3 plus 2 into 2 over 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 there is x I put 2. 2, 2, then x2. So this will be 3 plus this is 4 over 1, which will be 7. So now my inverse of 2 is 7. Now when I come to this, they are asking me if f of x is this, h of x is this, find the values of x for which h of x is 0. Okay, so starting with what they are telling us to get. Remember the one that tells us that our h of x is 0. We want to find the value of x for which our function is 0. What we do? We create the whole function. The whole of this is given by that. I think you see. So this is 3, x squared minus 3 equal to 0. Make x the subject. Take this beside, you get 3x squared equal to 3. Divide through by 3. Your x squared becomes 1. Get x, the square root of x squared, both sides. That's your x becomes plus or minus 1. So these are the values of x which are going to make this function be equal to 0. We start with the substitute 1 here, this function will go to 0. We we'll substitute negative 1, even this one. Because when we square negative 1, we will be getting 1 times 3 minus 3, which will be 0. So these are the values that are going to do all that. When I come now to you, now, Roman numeral 2, they are asking me to get h inverse of 6. But if I get this now, these are some questions are like this. They will give you h inverse of the 6. It means to get this, you first get the inverse, then in that inverse you substitute the value of 6. So here, it was okay, it gave you this first and then it, told, it, it then went on to say, get this. Then this one already starting from here. So you that we have first get this, then you get this. So this one I first get the h inverse, then I substitute it 6. What do we do? We said our h of x is equal to 3x squared minus 3. So now we get our h of y will be where there is x, we put y. 3y squared minus 3. Now we break this to our x. The function, the variable in our little function, so which is now x. Now this will be 3y squared minus 3 equal to 2x. Now make y the subject. Take 3 beside, we are 3 equal to x plus 3 when positive cosines becomes a positive. Now we remove this 3 by dividing through by 3. y squared by 3 equal to x by 3. So now this one is going to cancel. Now your y squared will be x plus 3 over 3. You see that you need y to get the square root of sides. You get the square root of y. Also you get the square root of the sine of x over 3. You get the square root. So this is going to go with this. So this is that your y 
b d squared is all x plus b all by 3. And now this y will be your inverse. So now my h inverse of x is root x plus 3 all by 3. As simple as that. Now it's not the y that we have we have the square. If it was a tube, then we have got a tube root, as simple as that. Then after doing this, we come and we ever reach now this one. H. Now I remember two. Okay. Now H inverse over six. It's by the way there is X. I'm putting a three. I mean I'm putting a six. Where there is X, I'm putting a six, six. Plus three over three. This will be now a root of nine over three. And so this will be giving me a root over three and you cross that. It's the max of six. That's it, members. If you want, you can press it on the calculator the way you want. That's it, members. I wish you well. That's how we handle inverse of functions.